Hi, guys. <laughs> um, I'm here with Bay for another episode of Book Club with Bay. And today we're talking about the fourth book in the Mercy Thompson series, uh, which is Bone Crossed. We're yeah. just pumping out the book clubs this week, aren't we? Yeah, we really are. I'm like, you have the week off and you're about to give birth. I'm like, we have another another week <laughs> to just finish book club. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we both reread Bone Crossed. Uh, we didn't finish the whole thing, but I remember the ending, so it's all good. Uh, I could have told you the ending, like, two days ago, but I probably wouldn't have been able to tell you any of the lead up to it. So, uh, anyway. Yeah. And so I guess we should start with rating. And I will say, and you, I think you agreed with me too, out of the four books so far that we've both reread for the Mercy Thompson series, this one was for me the most enjoyable to reread. Yeah, I think the – for me, I think the last one I was really looking forward to rereading because it's, you know, I, I like that one. Um, Iron Kissed. Yeah. yeah. But because I can't – I don't like that she got raped. Yeah. I like I like that part of the story in a not – like in initially, like the uh, like the immediate aftermath, and like Adam getting all grr um, over it, and so like the whole book, I'm just like, okay, hurry up! Like, can can you hurry up? Can you hurry up? Can you hurry up? Because also, I like him dying. I like him dying. Yeah. Um. But this one, it was just a very pleasant reread. It really was, and I honestly like. I would immediately reread it again. And the other books, I would reread, but not, like, tomorrow. This one I would reread tomorrow. So I think that kind of tells you something about how enjoyable it was. That said, I don't like the vampire storylines. I like James Black. Again, spoilers for these books. I like James Blackwood, but I hate Marsilia. And I don't like reading yeah. about her. And I don't like reading about the seas and, you know, mm. like the mistress of the sea, the Marsilia. You just don't give a fuck about the sea. <laughs> it, I just no. really don't. And I like that they, I like that it gets wrapped up really quickly. Because yeah. then it's over. But I just don't like reading about it. Um, so, like I said, it was the most pleasant reread. So for me... As far as a rating goes, also the rapey stuff is weird, and the pacing <laughs> is a little off for it, and we'll get into that. Yeah. So, but for me, I would give it like a four point six out of five. I'd probably give it a four point two. Okay. So when we average that out, it goes under because I'm like doing our list by what we averagely think of all the books yeah so that's a but for us that four, puts it under like moon call so bone crossed so so far our list of like worst to not worst, or like you know honestly best to half best because all the <laughs> books are good they are for the most part so it's kind of like saying oh what's your favorite zelda game they're all good they're all really good so it's like trying to – so you're like basically listing off really good things. <laughs> so I don't – anyway, so our list right now is Iron Kissed, Moon Called, Bone Crossed, and Bloodbound. Um, do we have any real new characters that we need to introduce? Um, uh, well, there's new characters, but they're just – like the story kind of explains who they are. So. Yeah, so we don't really need to go into it um, right now. Like I said, I mean, we had like a big character section at the beginning of Moon Called and Bloodbound, but that's because they were all new. Uh, yes, and I, um, just really quickly, actually, while I'm thinking of it, because um, I couldn't remember, like I had forgotten that um, Baba Yaga gets introduced in this one. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, yeah, you're right. And yeah, we're, and we're talking in the last one about Baba Yaga and because I hadn't started rereading this one yet, and I'm just. I was just like, I have no idea where the fuck Baba Yaga comes right. into Right, so we, uh, if you remember from last time, we got Namani and Baba Yaga super mixed up, and we'll address that uh, when we get to that part of the story. So, real quick, uh, The Soul of the Dragon asked, are there any vampire stories that that isn't typical? Urban fantasy. Urban fantasy. Um, this is a very different she her the style of her vampires I will say is elaborate and it's different. I still don't like it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I don't like reading about it. Like I said in Bloodbound, Bloodbound is one of my least favorites of all the good books. I still gave it like a 3.8. Um but I just don't like the vampires. So, real recap, good a recap is that Marcilia is the mistress of the sea, the vampire sea, and the tri cities. Um, so I think we should also go over timeline. Yes. Again. Yeah. So this no. one kicks off exact like it. The there's like final scene, first scene crossover. Yeah. So let me just we'll just start at the first one. Uh, SDA, do you do you dislike the vampires because they're overdone, or just because you don't like how most people write them? I actually prefer how most people write them where they're, um, like, kind of off on their own, doing their own thing. I find that more interesting than this highly organized, like, seed thing with all this complicated mumbo-jumbo. Yeah, and I think I think part of it as well is there's only, only one of the vampires is likable as, you know, being likable and there's only one other vampire in it that I enjoy reading about which is Wolf. Yeah. The rest of the vampire characters I'm not that keen on and that could also probably have a role in it as well. Yeah and the other thing is that the vampire characters might even be more interesting were they all independent people and not part, yeah. and not part of the seed. I don't think I would hate them as much, but because they're part of a seed and yeah, Phobos Media, a huge social order, I'm just I'm not into it. Um, so timeline just from Moon Called up to this one. So Moon Call takes place again over the week of Thanksgiving, um, and then Bloodbound takes place in early summer. Iron Kiss is about a month later, and this one takes place directly after Iron Kiss. Iron T Kiss takes about, uh, I would say, a couple weeks, maybe a week. Um, probably it's a week from the beginning part, and then the last like three chapters is a week. So it's about two weeks long. Yeah. And then, um, Bone Crossed is a week and a half or so. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, what's more terrifying to me, zombies, vampires, werewolves, or drop bears? Drop bears are not scary. You just need some Vegemite behind your ears and you're good. So we'll <laughs> say zombies. Um, <laughs> so I guess we can jump right into the story and we can discuss the stuff that we don't like. Okay. <laughs> Afterwards. Okay. Well, you can do the plot recap because you do it funnest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so it starts off. Okay, so she's just been raped in, at the end of Iron Kissed. And Iron Kissed uh, ends with her being like, yeah, Adam. <laughs> and, <laughs> and this one opens with her like looking in the mirror, and there's like a little bit more in her monologue and all that. And she goes in and takes off her shirt, and then he like tries to cover, and he's like, no, you have to talk to somebody. I'm not going to do this unless, like, you're better. <laughs> and she's like, aw, but I want to fuck. And he's like, no. <laughs> and then her mom shows up. <laughs> so Adam is stalling her mom, and she's, like, trying to find clothes to wear, which I actually really relate to because I'm, I'm like, my room's a mess, and shirt, 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 fuck, fuck, fuck. So, yeah, um, I, get, I get that's, like, one of the most realistic parts of this book. 
I um, love that Adam's like terrified of her mother. <laughs> I know, right? So her mom is like this sassy little uh, thing who's like a five foot nothing. She's got a pink Barbie gun. I want a pink Barbie gun. <laughs> Same. Um, so her mom shows up because it's all in the newspapers and everybody knows that she's been rape doodled. And her mom's like, why did I have to find out about in newspapers that you got raped? And I'm like, probably because you're an overbearing piece of shit. That's why. Um, also, that's, she, you ha- like, she sees her mother, like, twice a year. Like, it's not really exactly the most pleasant phone conversation. Like, can you, like, it would just, I, if I only saw my mother, like, you know, a couple times a year because she annoyed me. The last thing I'd want to do after getting rape doodle would be. Oh, Hi, mom, mom. By the way. <laughs> yeah. So I get her not wanting to talk about it because. Um. So yeah, her mom shows up, and she's like, "We're gonna talk about this," and she's like, Ugh, "All right, fine, mom. I'll go to my room." And then Stefan just pops in, uh, sizzling and crackling. He's, like, all black and, like, tss. Not, like, and hissing, stopping. but, like, he's sizzling because he's... <laughs> <laughs> he's not hissing at people. He's just, like, you know, eh, tss. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he's very hot right now. So he's burnt to a crisp is what I'm trying to say. He's, like, an overcooked hot dog. Uh, overcooked hungry hot dog so he gets in there and he's like i'm going to suck your blood he doesn't say it he just like goes for her and then adam's like no take me and then her mom i'm gonna shoot it and she's like no mom don't shoot it okay put your barbie gonna wet and mom's like are you sure that i should put my he's like trying to suck your blood and she's like no it's fine it's just stefan he wouldn't he wouldn't hurt me okay so <laughs> It's what happens. So uh, Adam starts feeding him, and then he gets a couple more wolves over to feed Stefan. And what happened was, Mar- so if you remember in Bloodbound, it ends with her, uh, she kills Andre, who she wasn't supposed to kill. And that's Marsilia's left-hand man, where Stefan is her right-hand man. And Stefan and Wolf cover up the murder of Andre. But then Wolf confesses, and Marsilia has since tortured and starved Stefan and dropped Stefan in Mercy's house so that Stefan would eat her. And then once he ate her, the wolves would kill Stefan, and then she'd be like, Race wolf. Okay, the other thing that I found, we'll talk, we'll get, just remind me to talk about this, um, is the whole conspiracy of Marsilia setting all of this up to expose a coup. Yeah, is silly, and I'll get and we'll get to that. He took a lot on faith. I'm like, you could have just put them in the truth chair and been like, "You want to start a coup, (laughs) motherfucker? (laughs) You want to start a coup, motherfucker? Yeah, like that's all you had to do." (laughs) Um, But no, she went with this really convoluted plot, and you're just although, although there is a bit of a reason with the truth chair, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Yeah. So he eats a couple wolves and her mom's like, I can't believe that there are vampires. Like, I know that there are other things, but vampires? What? And you're like, yeah, yeah, get over it. Um, so it sucks, sucks his blood and all that. Um, and then what happens after that? Um, well, then she chats with mommy. Oh, wait, one of your favorite lines in the book. Well, I don't know if it's one of your favorite lines, but you've mentioned it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, while Stefan's eating Peter, which is Honey's uh, husband and mate. Yeah, because they call in a couple more wolves because yeah. he's been starved and needs lots of food. And she's like, Mom, meet Adam, Daryl, and like blah, 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 blah. And then she's like, and the nice man over there, and like Peter is a nice man feeding Stefan. <laughs> and I heard it, I, I think I laughed the first time, but I definitely laughed the second time because I just thought it was funny. The nice man feeding Stefan is Peter. And I was like, or Peter is a nice man feeding Stefan. And I'm like, I like that. Because um, it's probably something that I would say. So it made me happy. <laughs> um, I got chat. Wait, what? Peter, they ate you, dog. Where's Aussie Peter? Peter. I, I haven't seen him, but 
Oh, Peter. Okay, Peter. Yeah, got it. Got it. My brain was like, but he's not here. Okay, I feel you. <laughs> um, sorry. If he if you listen to this, lay light a pedal high. Hi, Peter. So, um, then her college friend Amber shows up and is like, I have a ghost and I need your help. And I saw that you got raped and I remembered that you said you saw ghosts and werewolves and will you come take care of my ghost? And she's like, yeah, yeah, go away. So Amber drives off. Um, and <laughs> what happens after that? Like, fuck, um, this is... Then she goes they take, to the shop. Well, they take Stephanie goes... to Adam's house and no. she goes to the shop, right? Uh, yep, and it's being all graffitied and skull and bones. Oh, right, right, right. And it's and there's crossed bones painted on the door, which is which are magic, which are magic, and it's been painted it's, over. Yeah, because then um also Tim's cousin like Courtney, Courtney liar yeah. and murderer all over the shop, and then Z has to glamour the whole shop to hide the paint from her mum, um because he doesn't like her mum. And he wants her to leave. Yeah. And the dog yeah. doesn't like her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I think she goes home to talk to Stefan. Right. And then she starts to have a panic attack. No, she has panic attacks like every 10 seconds. But it's Pete. But it, it's not. Sorry, I'm reading chat. It's not Peter. It's Stefan's panic attack because they're still blood bound, if you will. Um, and so Adam bites a chunk right. off his own arm, feeds it to her, and makes her pack. And she becomes pack, and it's like, oh my god, I can't believe she's actually part of the pack, because she's a coyote, and oh my god, I can't believe it worked. But I guess the thinking is, like, coyote equals close enough. So. I guess so. She's pack now, yay! Um, Except not yay, because no one's happy about it. Right. And the other thing that's odd about this is that it doesn't actually break <laughs> Stefan's bond to her. So Stefan's bond to her, vam- a vampire bond is different from a wolfy pack bond. So they yeah, don't I cancel think- each other out. So I don't but understand I think why. the pack can lend her strength to block out the screamy torture stuff. Yeah, that I mean, like, that would make sense. It's just, I feel like that gets a little convoluted later. A little bit. So, that happens. Um, then she goes to talk to Stefan, and I forget even, like, what about. Um, to be like, oi, all your peeps are dead. And he, he's like, yeah, I know all my peeps are dead. It's sad. And then... How does she end up deciding to go and see Amber? Well, oh. okay. So, oh, because then, because then, because then, Uncle Mike, they go on a date. And... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. basically, what Mercy has decided uh, is that because Marcelia knows about what she's done and wants to kill her, Mercy has decided that she's going to ditch everybody and run. Because the skull and bones also means, oh, by the way, everyone try and kill her. Yeah. So she's decided that she's going to try to run. And I get that it's, like, character development for her, but it's also annoying because you're, like, you have so many people who are willing to protect you. And, like, that basically saved your life later. Yeah. Stop being stupid. Pretty much. Because she's like, I can't tell Adam anything. And I'm like... Ugh. You literally can. <laughs> Fuck. I'm like, you can literally tell him everything. You know what, though? I will... I will say... By the end of this book, she realizes... I can tell Adam stuff. 
She does. And she pretty and she pretty much sticks with it. Like with, no, she with does. very few she exceptions. Doesn't, she doesn't do it. She doesn't do the annoying thing again. It's just annoying. And it doesn't last long in the book either, so it's not enough to Cause once like they pack bond, she stops being like, oh, I'm going to run away. <laughs> so no. is literally the point of these books. It's actually not. These these books are really like plot driven. And the soap opera drama is very minuscule. It's just it's fun to bitch about the little stuff. Yeah. No, these books are very good in that they don't dwell on soap opera you drama and they actually go for plot over um, that kind of drama. Like, even the love triangle isn't... It's annoying, but it's not a major part of the story at all. Yeah. Oh, that just reminds me of something I want to vent about. Okay. I'm going to write it down because okay. I'm not there yet. Um, so... What happens next? Um, and then her they, and Adam go on a date. Yeah. Um, and she's like, and she's like, oh, I'll, I, I guess I'll run away after the date. And then she realized on the date she didn't want to run away. And then, um, they go to Uncle Mike's so or there's trouble at Uncle Mike's. And there's a snow elf and someone dies. Mary Jo gets killed. In. There's like a magic baggie yeah. that's the vampires put there to. It's a trap for the werewolves. Um. And, and it made one of the fae go crazy. It made one of the fae go crazy, and Mercy turns into a coyote and, like, gets it out of there. Um, and then this is where Baba Yaga is introduced. So um, plenty of those in the book. What does that even mean? Fight scenes, I guess. Oh. In this book, I don't know. They're, it's more like... These books tend to be more sleuthy books. They're well, not usually like at a, least one fight scene per book. Yeah, they're not like a mystery. It's not like a mystery series, but like she usually it's has to. It's kind of like a drama, fantasy. Yeah. Um. So anyway, uh. She gets the baggie. She gets rid of it. Um, Mary Jo dies, but Baba Yaga brings her back to life. And this is where Baba Yaga is introduced. Like I said last time, we were like, I swear. Um, I'm an adult. I'll go to bed when I want. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we, were like, so we were like, I swear that Baba Yaga turned up in book three but she turns up in book four i totally got bobby because even when i initially read bob the this book i thought the carrying crow and bobby yaga were the same person i think that's i think that's sometimes the flaw with audiobooks sometimes you have to listen to it twice to correct like sometimes you mishear something and once you've misheard it it just confuses you until you re-listen and you're like oh <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, because once they called her Nemani, I was like, is that Baba Yaga's name? What? So yeah, there's Baba Yaga even mentions um what's her face? Not by Neymani or Carrion Crow, it's like Morrigan or Mordigan or something. Yeah. That's also the Carrion Crow. Which so, is incredibly confusing. I know, just at least have if two names max. You get yeah. two max. But with the Fae, there's always, like, ten different names, and you're like, which one is which? So, has, like, a gazillion once Yeah, so I think, like, once she gave the Carrion Crow, like, ten names, I was like, so it's Baba Yaga, right? Um, <laughs> which is which is what happened. But Baba Yaga and Nimani are, are two different people. So Baba Yaga heals her, and then I guess there are, like, side effects. Yeah, she gets a little bit iffy for a couple of books and faints every so often, and then she eventually goes back to normal. And she's grumpy at Mercy. Her grumpiness at Mercy comes up later. Yeah, she's not. It's not really in this book where it comes up. It's the next one. Yeah, and I think she's grumpy at Mercy because, like, she wants to do the fuck a doodles with Adam. I think it's that, and then it's also I died because, you know, you killed a vampire that you shouldn't have. 
Right. Thank bitch. <laughs> yeah. You got me killed. <laughs> I mean, you also got me lived as well, so. But. But I guess it's all about perspective. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, like, if she hadn't been there, you also would have died, died, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so then after that, Bran comes over and is like, I heard you got rape diddled and you case and brought. Like, come on, Dad. What? Leave and then Sam comes in and he's like, Dad, come on. Be nice. <laughs> yeah. And it's actually kind of a funny scene. I like Bran a lot. Um, I like when Sam calls him Da. I do too. It's cute. Yeah, it is. So. <laughs> then Bran's like, maybe you should go to Spokane and check out this vamp shit. Yeah, because they're kind of like, well, we deal with the logistics of Marsilia you should go away. Um, <laughs> and so she does. Uh, and Stefan's like, I'll go with you, but hide. Yeah. Uh, because there's only one vampire in Spokane, and that's James Blackwood. And James Blackwood uh, keeps all other preternatural creatures out of his territory, which is Spokane if you're scribe. Oh, yep, and just responding to chat, how many people heard she got rape doodled She found out when her friend came to visit, oh, by the way, it was national news that you got rape doodled and killed your rapist. So. Yeah. Um, everyone. Everyone heard. <laughs> Which would be pretty freaking humiliating. Yeah. Oh, we missed the scene as well where with the rapey dojo guy. Oh my! <laughs> he, uh, she literally is like, he's he he he's either turned on by me being raped or me killing someone, and based on what he's doing, I'm pretty sure he's turned on by me being raped. And it's like, why? <laughs> Why did that scene have to happen? It doesn't add anything to the plot other than there's a guy who likes rape. And he, honestly, okay. Here's the thing. And uh, this happened in Eve the Awakening too. <laughs> murder doodled him. Yeah, yeah, she did. Um, she did murder doodle him in self-defense for being rape doodled. So, okay, this happened in Eve the Awakening too, where there's just random scene with rapey guy for no freaking reason <laughs> these scenes add nothing to the plot by the way and honestly this happens i feel like in books that are written by hardcore feminists yeah, where they have I've... to have an over the top openly into rape person that doesn't exist in real life yeah because and i honestly think she didn't know what to do because like the first few books, it's like, I think Ben's a rapist. I know Adam's saying he's not a rapist, but I think he is a rapist. Oh, can we just talk about Ben real quick? Yes. Ben? Because he seems to be the only one that's happy that she's in the pack. Let's be honest. Ben, like, likes Mercy. According ben, to Adam, he adores Mercy. Ben defended Mercy after she got raped. But Ben is, of course, a misogynist of the highest order. But you never hear him be misogynistic. In fact, he's a really good person. Because wasn't he? Didn't he end up being suspected of the rapes back in England because he was trying to stop them? Yes. And she's like, "But he's a misogynist of the highest order," and I'm like, "But he's not." And then when later on in the book when Adam's like, Ben adores you. He just doesn't know how to adore a woman. And I'm just like, <laughs> but he never poses a danger to women. Like, that just doesn't happen. And <laughs> and 
like I said, I mean, this it's, is it's so saying forced. this about it's the so same. Forced. It's so forced. Peter, hi. We were talking about you earlier. Peter, <laughs> oh, Peter sorry. <laughs> ben, ben, a day earlier, two days earlier, before she's like, he's a misogynist of the highest order, was defending well, her as a rape. And, and he, he risked being killed by Adam to yell at Adam. <laughs> yeah. Be like, dude, get back up here and fix your fucking girlfriend. I know. She needs you. <laughs> but he's a misogynist of the. Like, it's like, so you just wanted a misogynist character for no reason. Yeah, so then there's, like, this <laughs> scene at the dojo where she gets into a fight with a guy, and he's like, ooh, you got raped. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking, it's so stupid. It's so stupid. <laughs> Honestly, Patricia Briggs is like a hardcore SJW. She just <sighs> manages to hide it well with mm, 82.3% of her book. Yeah, and like I said, you can just tell when an author is a hardcore SJW because they just throw in random rapey dudes everywhere. Hmm? You Sorry, I phased up with one sec. Sorry. It's okay. You can tell when a, an author is a hardcore SJW because they just throw in rapey people everywhere. And my other rant thing. Actually, you know what? I'll just skip to it. You know how, like, later on in the book, Sam comes home from the hospital and um, and Adam is all like, so which is at this time the missus walked into a doorknob or fell down the stairs or blah, blah, blah. It's like, and then he's, like, no, bitching about this woman who let the pit bull near the baby, even mm -hmm. though the pit bulls bit her multiple times, and then they go off on a. It's not even. It's not even the dog's fault. It's the stupid owners, and it was the same thing with Dobermans and German Shepherds and Rottweilers, and the only people that suffer are the children and the dogs. And it's like, fuck. We get it. You don't have to virtue signal about your dog breeds, okay? Because in um in Night Broken we get virtue signal that again about dogs. I know, but at least it's relevant to the plot in that. Book. Yeah, this one it's not. It's just like random dog virtue signaling. <laughs> I hear it? other SJWs hate Briggs. Yeah, because she also just doesn't write that men are trash nonstop as well. So she she's she's enemy enemy of everyone, but also friend of everyone because I like the series. <laughs> Um, yeah, like, I like the series. It's just that these random things where random misogyny, like, oh, wow, wild misogynist appear. I'm like, it doesn't fit at all. Like, you made Ben not a misogynist, but you're like, he's a misogynist, I swear. No, he's not. He's not a misogynist. I could sit here and tell everyone all day that Bay is blonde. She's My a fucking... are blonde. But you're not. Yeah, I'm not blonde. Yeah, it's it's literally the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah, because nothing that Ben does is indicative of misogynist. Nothing, other than foul language. Yeah, that's it. Like, so I guess if you if you swear about women. <laughs> And it's like he doesn't like women, but he's very protective of Jesse and Mercy and gets along with Ariely and Honey and... And almost got arrested in freaking England for rape, for trying to stop rape. Yeah. Lord help me. Okay, so... Team Ben. Yeah. Right? So she goes to... Um, she goes to Spoken, <laughs> and if oh, so if you're from us, is that your cat? I thought that was like angry Bubba. I think that's the baby. It is, and it sounds like Sticks is asleep. Give me one sec. Okay. I'll Carry on with that. your whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so if you're from Australia, you're actually... Yeah, no, it seems like, uh, given her standards for misogyny, yes. 
and it's just it doesn't fit and a lot of a lot of like I said a lot of authors <laughs> a lot of authors do this where they just randomly insert yeah, a wild misogynist appeared. It used virtue signaling. It's super effective. Yeah, no, it's it's really weird because Ben is very reliable and loyal to Adam and the pack, and he's not a dick to Mercy. Like, the worst that happens is they banter. And yet, every other son, whenever she's introducing Ben, whenever she's like, oh, Ben was here. Ben is blah, 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 blah. He's from England. He was suspected of rape. He's a misogynist. He's foul mouth. Don't forget that he's a foul mouth misogynist, goddammit. Also, he doesn't do anything to indicate that he's a misogynist. And it just it doesn't it doesn't fit. Um and like I said, in Eve the Awakening by Jenna Morisi, um and I like Jenna and I like her videos, and I liked Eve for the most part. But same thing kind of happened where there were just these random scenes with this guy who wanted to rape her. And it's just out of nowhere. And people don't act like that. They just don't. Like, a guy is not going to be out in the open. And also, both of those scenes happen in martial arts class where there's, like, random guy who's into rape who's like, I want to rape you in public where people can see them. And... <laughs> like, it's just not how rapes, it's not how rapey people work. Like, rapey people are not going to walk up to you and go, like, hey, baby, I want to rape you. Like, that's just not what happens. <laughs> and, like, I don't know, it just, it rubs me the wrong way, <laughs> which is kind of punny. It really rubs me the wrong way, though, because that's just, I mean, maybe if he was blackout drunk, but not, like, during the day in a martial arts class. And, I mean, because other people would see it and other people would be like, what the fuck, dude, stop it. But apparently nobody does that. People just accept that there's, like, this super rapey guy everywhere. And, hey, Sweeper Steven, and uh, maybe that's super meta and she's making the statement that people call others misogynists without any warrant. Maybe the writer is brilliant and is coding everything. I don't know. I mean, I don't think so. Because she really wants you to think that he's a misogynist even though he doesn't act like it. Um... And I don't see the point of coding that. I mean, if she is, it worked, but I don't see the point. Um, but yeah, it's weird how some of these feminist authors have such a fascination with rape and with their female pro tags. Yeah, vamp patriarchy, and you have to point it all out. Yeah, it's weird that these, like, feminist authors are really obsessed with rape and have to have their characters at least once fight off a super rapey dude. And it's just, like, it adds nothing to the plot. In fact, it's so out of place in the plot that it doesn't make sense. They know that rape hits very hard for a lot of readers. And you know what? You're right. But if that type of rape scene, not ra where like they don't get raped, but it's just this random guy who gets a hard on by trying to rape somebody in public. <laughs> if, if you've ever been raped or assaulted or stalked or something or violated in that kind of way, it's incredibly irritating because it makes no sense. And I think it's just a weird, creepy feminist obsession with rape and with injecting rape culture, I guess, into everything. Because if there was a guy that blatantly into rape, like, people would be flipping the fuck out. But they're not because he's quiet about it or something. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Um, and, yeah, I wish they would stop it. Because it's... 
right back. Hi. It just bogs down the story. I was just talking about how, like, both Jenna and Patricia Briggs put a rape scene in a dojo. And it's a lot of feminist authors, like I was saying, like to have a scene where their strong female characters fight off the big bad would be rapist. Yeah. Oh, um, oh, just a heads up as well. Bubby is like on her bean bag behind me, so okay. Yeah, she's she's sick, so she might start crying again. Who okay. Knows? So, but. yeah, we can talk a little bit more about that later once we get through the thing. So she goes to Spokane. She yep. meets uh, Amber's deaf child, Chad, who I absolutely love. Um, she He's stays there for a little bit, meets Jim Blackwood. Jim Blackwood, which was James Blackwood, bites her a couple of times so that he can like claim her. She sees the ghost, and then the ghost tries to kill Chad, and then she leaves. Oh, and the dad believes the ghost now. Yeah, and the dad, Corbin, believes that it's the ghost. So she, she goes home. Uh, then she goes to, like, this trial for, oh, she, like, goes for a run as a coyote. Uh, Estelle shows up and is, like, Steph, and is, like, Steph, and oh, join us. Bit. What did I miss? I missed a bit. Because um, Stefan's, like, bitch, you got bitten by Blackwell twice. You're, like, mm, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Stefan exchanges blood with her to break the tie between her and Blackwood and to make Stefan... The vampire that she's tied to. No. So then she goes for a run as a coyote, and well, no, on the way home, Estelle is like, "Stuff and join me. We we'll, we will t- together. We will rule the sea." Then he's like, "Meh." So then she goes for a run as a coyote later, and then Bernard shows up, and he's like, "Stuff and join me. Together, we will rule the sea. We choose to go to the moon, not because it is easy, but because it is hard." <laughs> um. That I, I said that because she says that he sounds like JFK. It's a joke. Whoa. Saws. Okay. So, and then Stefan is again like, meh. So then she gets back and it's like, I, Marsilia wants us. And so then there's a trial where she's like, Estelle, Bernard, have you betrayed me? Oh, no. And then she, yes. uh, Estelle <laughs> gets, and then Bernard gets taken by his maker. Yeah. Now, the reason I was, like, the thing I said before, like, regarding why she didn't just put them in the chair, if you, in this scene where she actually has them on the chair, all um, Bernard does is repeat over and over again on the chair, I did not betray the seed, because in his mind, Marsilia isn't, because he even said to, he even said to Stefan, like, if you want to rule, I will follow you. Right. Um, Cause he's not, he wasn't in it for the power. He didn't think Marsilia was good for the seed anymore. And, and so then all- that's why he gets taken by his maker instead of getting killed. Whereas Estelle was like, just wanted power. So she gets. Yeah. Um, and all she did was scream on the chair. She, yeah. So, um, and so that's why Stefan had to be broken from the seed so he could be an independent witness that they were both yeah. plotting. So then she goes home, goes outside for something, and then gets kidnapped by Corbin and taken to Blackwood's manor. And there she's, like, held, and we find out that Corbin is doing this because Blackwood threatened Chad, by the way. Um, but he's also so, kind of under his power. Yeah, so she's... Uh, being held, and we find out that Blackwood is a necromancer, and whoever he feeds off, um, he whoever, can adapt their powers. He adapts their powers, so he wants Mercy's power so that he can get to control ghosts, right? Yeah, because yeah. um, he still has some power over ghosts because he used to have a walker, and then the walker died. Right. So there's a fae there and all that and that's why he can walk in the sun or something why he can be active yeah, during the day it's an oak fae so he feeds off of sunlight right so, and um i forget i feel like in fire touched because there's another 
a vampire that is tied to a fae that can also walk in the sun. And I don't know if she says there's only one other vampire I know of that could do that, or if she says that's the only one. But if she says that's the only one, it's a continuity error. But I don't remember, so I'm not going to say definitively that it is. Um, and we'll then make she, it right. Yeah, and then she stabs him with the walking stick, and the book's over. Oh, well, then, Marsilio, because um, after the trial vampy thingy, Marsilio's like, so, Stafford, like, it was all a ploy, I, you know, come back. And he's like, no. And then he, so he runs away, and then she's, gives her a note to give to Stefan, which I'm pretty sure she gives to him in this book. And um, it's like jokes, like your sheep are all still alive. Right. Because Stefan thinks that they're all dead. And then it ends. So the plot is a little bit more convoluted, but it's not super convoluted like it was in Moon Called. The only, I haven't read the 10th book yet, but the only really other convoluted plot is um, Frostburned. I still don't understand that plot. And Moon Call. Again? Huh? It's the one where I always forget it. It's like Based a, on the names. It's like uh Adam's perspective in it. I know it, but I can't remember what the plot is. Oh, it's the one where they get the wolves get captured, it's the one where Peter dies. Oh uh, yep, yep, yep. Poor Peter. Yeah. So um yeah, and that's pretty much it. But yeah, Sorry, I know. now I'm sad again. Um, I guess, I don't know, like, I, the focus on, so rape, okay, so she also, there's a sex scene with Adam a week and a half after she was raped. And Adam goes from, I'm not going to touch you for a while, to a week and a half later being like, It's not even a week and a half later, it's like, two days later because he tells her that like a week after she gets raped and this is oh like right 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 later. okay yeah you're right because then she has a minor panic attack the next morning he's like mercy people don't get over shit like that in a week and it's like then, then why, why did you and because like last night you, like because he even says like see i i knew you wanted me just as much as i wanted you and rah, rah, rah. like there was none of this are you sure are you sure Maybe we should talk about this before we get into this. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's just because she was like, time for a sex scene. And the sex scene <laughs> is fucking weird. <laughs> oh, it's weird. <laughs> like, the, I don't the, know if it's the full bad play, thing. the full pl- play is described so bizarrely. Be- Everything is him healing her. Mental with, wounds with his mouth. <laughs> and at one point... He puts raspberries on his stomach as well. Like, I'm sorry, like... And then I'm at some out point... With a guy and then he just blows a raspberry on my belly, I'm like, okay, that just killed the mood. Goodbye. Also, <laughs> right, like, you don't get sex for a year because <laughs> fuck off. Um, also, this, I think, like... I almost cried the first time I heard this. The next morning, she's like naked, and he says, oh. "I spy with my little eye something." That... Beginning with an A. Yeah, and you're like, because she's looking for her underwear, so she's ass up in the air, and... looking under the bed, and then, and then, what's even worse is. She says, I'll spy like, your little eye and squish it. <laughs> like, yeah, like she like she makes a retort right, but then she's like, but then the next line is I shook the something in question in his direction. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I'm like, clearly Patricia Briggs has never been flirted with. Okay. Hi. Yeah. Like when you messaged me that, because I hadn't read the book yet. Oh. <laughs> He's so cute. Know you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay, sorry. Go to bed. No, um. Oh, he just like yeah, licked yeah. my glasses. <laughs> sorry. Um, that's okay. No, when you messaged me about that, um, I screenshotted it and sent it to Stixie and was like, if you ever do anything. 
like like if you ever say anything like that to me like yeah no it's never happening ever again right i was just like <laughs> clearly patty has never been flirted with um what <sighs> i'm just trying to what man born in like the 50s or late 40s or whatever thinks I spy with my little eye something beginning with A is an appropriate after sex banter. Maybe if it was, you know, like a 14 year old that had, uh, I could excuse it if it was a really dorky teenager trying to get laid. Or something, I don't know, but... I would literally vomit if somebody said that to me. Like, Adam, you've bred. You you know, you know, you know better. <laughs> Maybe that's why they got divorced. I could see getting divorced over that, absolutely. Yeah. Well, what book is she in? Uh, seven, Night Broken. No, eight, Night Broken. Because I hate her so much and I can't I do wait too. to just... I like how she was handled, though. Oh, honestly, the way that that whole storyline was written, brilliant. Yeah, because they could have easily had it be like her and Adam almost break up, but that just doesn't happen. And I was like, thank God. I know, but I hate Adam so much still. From, like, just in how he handled it all still. Like what the part? Sense of, um... After Mercy almost gets killed by Lava Dude, mm -hmm. and she, and she admits that she knew that he wasn't human, and Adam's response is, "Why didn't you tell me?" And it, he sounded hurt that she didn't trust him enough to tell him. Whereas if if that if that was my husband, and he was anything other than why the fuck didn't you tell us you almost got my wife killed, you fucking selfish cow? Yeah, that's true. I'd be, I'd be pissed if there was anything other than get out of my house before I kill you. Yeah, <laughs> because that's how I would feel if, like, somebody didn't tell me something, they got somebody they almost cared about killed. I'd be like, we're going to lock you in the cellar until this is over with, and then you're dead, okay? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, the rapey part is just, like I said, the, the scene with the dote, it bothers the hell out of me. And it, I think part of it is that you can tell that these people have never known anybody who's been raped and they've never been in this kind of situation because people just don't fucking act like that. And they yeah. think that that's an accurate depiction of a rapey dude. And it's just not. No, and... Mm, mm. I, I just... I don't know. I I just really don't like the scene because it it literally serves zero purpose. Zero purpose other than to be like, "Hey, I was raped and I could still kick ass." Yay me. And it and it's the same thing with Eve. And I don't mean to keep ripping on Eve. It's just the most recent book that we've mm. talked. You know. That being said, it's in the Covenant series too. The very first scene is a guy being like coming on to her rate way too harshly. Yeah, and there's, lays like, him out. there's other stuff, I think, in book two or three. In fighting. It's always fighting scenes. Yeah, because the girls always fight them off. And it's like, that's just not how rape happens <laughs> for the most part. Mm -hmm. Like, because another thing is that they're in, I mean, at least in the Covenant series, they weren't super in public. Whereas yeah, yeah. even this one, it's in the middle of a martial arts class, and you're like... Well, also in Covenant with the later scenes as well, it's it's a bit better established, and there's reason. And it, it's not it's not quite so rapey, more just I, I'm going to get a bit of a chubby child beating you up because I don't like you. So it it's okay 
But yeah, I, I just think the fascinate yeah, the fascination with rape is just bizarre to me. Yeah. Um, Sorry, and I don't know just why checking they, on Bubby. She's falling asleep on the beanbag. And I just don't know why they do it. It doesn't. It just, <sighs> just doesn't serve any purpose. It serves a purpose to show her badass. She is, and it's also so. I guess her teacher can be like, "Good, good job." killing a dude and then she can be like oh adam remembered that i like to walk back to the garage i guess that's fyi the mass the vast majority of rapes dawn i know that was i know it was an accident but i just thought it was funny <laughs> <laughs> fucking dawn always raping people um <laughs> donald how dare you uh sorry um, I forgot what I was going to say. I don't think another explicitly weird rapey scene happens. But I don't know. I just kind of want to address, like, the obsession with rapey dudes in fiction. Because it's weird. It's so weird to me. Because the guys yeah. just like that, they just don't, they're not in real life. Because yeah, I will s- I will say, though, one thing that was different in this series compared to the other ones, and it could be probably because the other ones are more like young adult and stuff that where these scenes happen, mm-hmm. um, the love interest doesn't get all... Uh, he's, he's normally all like, girl, and she's like, babe, all I need you to do is hold, hold my shit, okay? I, I, I got this, and then he's like, he's lucky I don't get in there and then later on he finds some way to get back at him anyway mm-hmm. um, whereas in this one Adam's just like okay I'm mad so I'm gonna put on my sunglasses so you don't see my wolf eyes but now I'm gonna kick back and watch watch my bitch do a shit because she's awesome yeah it makes it a little less irritating but it's still really irritating um I know I, I just like I just like that Adam because that's a big part of their relationship dynamic. Like, yeah. he's protective of her, but he's also, I trust you to handle um, your shit. FYI, the vast majority of rapes are by people you already know, not some... Co- yeah, that's that's the point. Mm. Like, nobody is in public just being like, you know what's really sexy? Forced intercourse. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually... <laughs> it froze on you just being like glary. <laughs> um yeah, so forced intercourse is not like people aren't openly I don't know. And like even people who have rape fantasies aren't usually turned on by like legitimate rape. No, either. it's just it, it's the idea of stuff i guess yeah I and it's it, it it yeah it's not really you're not gonna walk down the street and some guy's gonna be like hey you're rapable grab <laughs> <laughs> why do you think that all these female authors are so obsessed with it though like i just don't get the fascination because we live in a rape culture they need to fight back against it I guess. Like, it's... Like I said, I, I think I said this when you were gone, but I don't think these women actually know anybody who's been raped. Yeah, or... That, or that or... One other thing I could think of is because it, it's Sorry. always a fight scene. There is always a fight scene. It's always in a training situation. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's to... Maybe it's their version of a PSA. Hey, girls... Go learn self-defense and you can beat your rapist up. I don't think that's it because it's, I, you know, maybe, but I don't think that's it. And they're always very awkwardly inserted in a way that doesn't do anything for the plot. I know, but if that was the point, then I would be less angry because at least then it's, you know, you can learn how to defend yourself instead of teach men not to rape. Yeah, but it's just, they're just upset. They just want a rapey scene. I know. And it's dumb. And I also, and now I'm getting mad about Ben again. 
Yeah, because she just randomly inserts a misogynist who's not a misogynist, and you're like... Yeah, because that's right, because after Mary Jo gets revived, um, Warren's like, lol, Mary Jo's flirting with Ben. Um, and she's just like, and her inner dialogue thing is like going all like, Mary Jo's as liberated as they come, and he's like a misogynist of the highest order. Or How lowest does that order, even... depending on your perspective. <laughs> and then like they're throwing two bends of misogynists into this and because the second one is when uh, she's like Ben's a misogynist and Adam's like Ben adores you like I, I kind of like that I, I kind of like that Adam's response is like excuse you bitch <laughs> yeah because like he's not a misogynist Stop it, Mercy. Uh, don't you... Mercy, you thought he was a rapist. He wasn't. So stop treating him like you think he's a rapist. Yeah. Um, that's really all I have is, like, just... I have a, a lot of frustration in fiction when they add in random rapey guy scenes for no fucking reason. And but. I think this is the most pointless one yet. The Eve one is especially point. Like that whole arc, she could have cut. Yeah, but at least like the the guy was in it for more than just that scene. But it didn't. Have, it was just a rapey subplot for no reason. I know. I know. But I think this one's even more pointless because it was literally just, "Hi, here's this character. He it, he got turned on. That Mercy got raped. Mercy beats him up." Goodbye, character. We will never yeah. see you again. Yeah. And we'll never go to the dojo again either. I, I At least they mention the dojo often. Yeah. A little bit too often, but they do mention it. Yeah. But that's all I've got. Do you have anything else? Um, there was a really cute moment between... Um, Adam and Jesse, where like Jesse was making brownies with Mercy, and then Mercy's like, "Do you want brownies?" And he's like, "Depends on who made them." And Jesse's like, "Dad, I love Jesse. She's so like, I I really like Jesse." Yeah, but that's all I've got. Um, again, yeah, I like I like this book, and so far it was the most enjoyable to reread. We're probably going to be doing another one of the Covenant series next. Yes, we'll be doing Pure next yeah i don't know the names of the books <laughs> uh it's in front of me so yeah so we're gonna be doing that um so thank you guys for coming this one was a little bit shorter <laughs> because there wasn't as much to complain about plus um, also and the plot's not convoluted <laughs> it's funny because like we rated it like pretty decently and it's just like during the plot review it was just like <laughs> what what happened next and then we probably missed so much oh yeah, I better go and grab the puppy again. Yeah, so with that, we're going to go and uh, hopefully in the next couple of days we'll get that next one out. So thank you guys for coming. Thank you to Bay, and we will see you guys next time. Bye, guys.